I'm Patrick. I'm an account executive uh, here at Perpetua. I'm sure some of the clients who are on this know me and I've spoken before. Uh, we also have Danielle here. I'll let her introduce herself from Amazon Advertising. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danielle Wolf. I'm a senior marketing program manager. I've been at Amazon for about four and a half years now and working specifically on Amazon Attribution for uh, the last two years. Great. Um, and just to give some of you who may not know Perpetua a little bit of background, uh, we are an AI company that focuses on giving superpowers to anyone that sells online. We build really user-friendly products to allow anyone to automate and optimize ad units across Amazon and hopefully soon the rest of the internet. So without any further ado, I will let Danielle share her screen. I'm Danielle Wolf. I'm really excited to be here with you all today. I'm going to chat with you at first about um, what Amazon Attribution is, why we created it, before going into specifically um, the Amazon Attribution API and our latest enhancement through our integration with Perpetua. Um, but first off, um, congratulations everyone for making it through Cyber Week. I know it is a really crazy time for our industry. Um, but despite that, we are still in the midst of the holiday season. And December really does still represent a key time for marketers to engage with advertisers. And this data here on this chart specifically showcases that it's um, a chart of traffic from 2019 based on amazon.com. And it shows really the steep increase of traffic that we see in December. So even more telling, um, more than 50% of US holiday shoppers made their purchases in December and specifically in the two weeks before Christmas. So even though we are past Cyber Week, um, it's not over yet and the trend doesn't end in Q4, we continue to see the strong momentum going into Q1. So what does this mean for all of you? It means that the year still isn't over yet and there's still time to engage with your customers right now and throughout the rest of the year um, and engage with those holiday shoppers. So in order to do this, we recommend using a multi-channel approach in order to ensure that your brand remains top of mind. Um, after all, we know that the customer journey is really fragmented. There are so many different ways to engage with customers. Um, and we also know that most retail sessions do not end in a purchase. Um, this stat that we see on the left-hand side of the screen is from Salesforce, and it showcases that 64% of shoppers use multiple different channels in order to just make one single purchase. Um, and the stat on the right hand side is from Omnisend and it says that marketers that use three or more channels experience significantly higher, 250% uh, higher engagement and purchase rates than marketers that are using a single uh, channel in their campaign. So it's kind of showcases that research and discovery is a really important part of the customer journey. And, um, during the holiday season and outside of the holiday season. So advertisers really have to be engaging across all these different channels with their customers in order to achieve those conversions that they're hoping to achieve. So um, that is where Amazon Attribution comes in. Uh, Amazon Attribution helps you to understand how your non-Amazon marketing strategies help to lead um, and how they're resonating with holiday shoppers and how they lead to shopping activity on Amazon. Amazon Attribution is a free self-service measurement solution that enables marketers to understand the impact that their non-Amazon marketing channels across display, search, social, video, and email have on driving shopping activity and sales performance on Amazon. Through our self-service console, you're able to measure pay channels like Google or Facebook, but also organic channels like your blog posts or email lists. And we are uh, available to vendors and sellers. We've always been available in the US, but we recently launched across uh, UK, Canada, France, Italy, Spain, and Germany. So in terms of using the tool, we break it out into three key stages. First is measure. So you are able to measure across all those non-Amazon digital marketing channels to understand um, how that's impacting shopping activity and sales performance on Amazon. Um, next, and probably most importantly, um, optimize. So you're able to get those insights that you get from measuring and optimize your campaigns 
while they're still in flight. You don't need to wait until the end of the campaign in order to um, make those optimizations and make the biggest impact. And finally, as you're using Amazon Attribution to measure and optimize your campaigns, you'll start to notice trends that can be used to more effectively plan your future strategies. So for example, um, if you see that search is consistently your most efficient sales driver, you'll then know that for any time you have a promotional campaign or you're really hoping to drive sales, maybe during the holiday period, that you should prioritize um, search as a primary strategy. And as you continue to use it, you'll eventually be able to kind of build out a blueprint of what channels, publishers, tactics um, you can use in order to achieve your advertising goals. So in order to help you to measure, optimize, and plan, we provide metrics across each stage of the customer journey to better understand kind of your customer shopping journey um, and engagement with your products. So at the highest stage of the customer journey, we provide click metrics to help you understand kind of how many customers became aware of your brand as a result of your non-Amazon campaigns. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through an example um, throughout this slide. So let's say that you have a search campaign that you are driving customers to your uh, Amazon storefront. So clicks will show you how many customers were engaged enough with your search ad to click through and want to learn more on your Amazon store page. Um, next in the consideration stage, as I talked about on the earlier slide, given the amount of time and effort that customers are putting into product research and consideration these days, it's really important to make sure that you are focusing on this stage of the customer journey. Um, it is early stage metrics like clicks, detail page views, add to carts that ultimately lead to sales anyways. So it's really important to make sure you're continuing to monitor this stage of the customer journey. Um, so our first metric is detail page views, which tells you how many customers visited your various brands product detail pages. So back to that same example um, of a customer that clicked on your search ad was driven to your Amazon storefront. Detail page views tell you how many of those customers then were interested enough to go learn more about a specific product on that detail page. Um, detail pages are really specifically designed to aid in product research and consideration. As you guys know, it provides a ton of useful information like customer reviews, different images, um, links to related products, so much more. Um, so one, just really important to make sure that you always have those up to date with A plus content and um, have, are promoting products with positive customer reviews. And one way you can continue to monitor this is through the add to cart metric. So add to cart tells you how many times a customer added a specific product to their cart. Um, so back to the same example, you see that you're getting strong clicks and strong uh, detailed page views, but a disproportionately low add to cart. You might wanna go and take a look and see if all your images are up to date. If um, there's this positive customer review rating, we typically recommend 3.5 or higher if you're promoting a specific product. Um, so just um, important to keep those things in mind to empower customers to move through to the final stage of the customer journey, which is purchase and loyalty. Um, to close the uh, customer decision journey loop, we provide transactional first party metrics like purchases and sales. Um, to help you understand if customers feel kind of empowered and ready to purchase those products after becoming aware of it and learning more about it. So let's say you went back, you fixed your product detail page to have more up-to-date images and uh, you would now see a high add to cart rate, but you still see that there's a low purchase rate. You might wanna consider um, and see if that product's in stock, if it's retail ready, if um, it's eligible for prime shipping, those could be things that might be blocking customers from making that purchase. Um, so all these metrics together really start to tell a story of your customer's journey with your products and how they're engaging with it and really showcases parts where you should be um, maybe trying a different tactic, reaching in a different place with a different message in order to more effectively move customers through these journeys. And then just kind of adding on to that this slide kind of goes through those specific elements 
within a campaign that you can test. And these are some of our best practices to how you can really optimize um, customers' experiences and help to grow your business on Amazon. So uh, the first one is reach the right audience. So you want to ensure that you're reaching your right customers with the right message at the right place. So first stage is understanding who your audiences are. So you might wanna test kind of sending different messages to customers that are newer to your brand versus those that have purchased before and seeing kind of how that impacts how they're moving through the customer journey and how they're engaging with your products. Um, the next one is to maximize publisher performance. So you really want to understand kind of which channels and which publishers are the most effective and efficient at helping you reach your goals. Um, after that, you'll want to ensure that you're um, doing really effective creatives that are resonating with your customers. So you can do different A-B tests, maybe trying out different creative formats such as a video versus a display ad or sending a different message to a different customer type. Um, another test we've seen is doing more um, lifestyle imagery versus product specific imagery and seeing kind of how the performance changes based on those different tests. And finally, you'll want to ensure that you're creating engaging on Amazon experiences for your customers. Our most popular one with this that we've seen is um, testing top of funnel or newer customers and sending them to your storefront versus customers that are really familiar with your brand, sending them directly to a product detail page and seeing how that impacts performance. Um, sometimes you might see that a store could lead to more basket building or you can see that sending them directly to a product detail page might aid with a quicker purchase or quicker conversion. So all of these are interesting tests that you can do with different customers to really enhance their experience and kind of build out that, out that blueprint, as I said, in order to achieve optimal success and grow your business on Amazon. So before I hand things over to Patrick, I wanted to first chat through our latest API integration with Perpetua, kind of why we created it and the benefits of using it versus our self-service console that we have available. Um, so first reason is kind of, we know that everyone's busy. I've, I've read a recent stat that um, advertisers or marketers have to use six or more different tools in order to use their marketing campaigns and understand really what's working and what's not. So accessing Amazon attribution through a streamlined console really helps to make the process more efficient, have everything in one place. So it's one less place you have to log into to see what's working and what's not. Additionally, you're able to kind of set up these campaigns in just a few clicks. You don't have to manually set up different tags and apply them to your campaign. Um, the process is much more automated accessing it through Perpetua. Uh, next, you're able to unlock a comprehensive and quantifiable view of your performance. So in one place, you're able to see those upper funnel engagement metrics right next to and alongside those lower funnel Amazon conversion metrics. So you really get a holistic view of your reporting. And finally, and one that I'm the most excited about and think is the most important is you're able to automate your optimizations to help improve your ROI. So previously you would have to log into a console, see like maybe you would do it every 14 days. That's kind of what we recommend. And you would say, okay, which of my tactics are working, which aren't, and then you would log back into your ad server and maybe shift around some budget. You don't have to do that anymore. You're able to inform your optimizations based off of um, Amazon conversion metrics. If you decide it's detailed page views or if you decide it's purchases, whatever you're hoping to achieve and optimize, um, you're able to do that um, in a much more automated and quicker fashion through using the Perpetua integration. And that is all I have for you. So I will pass it back over to Patrick. Thank you, that was a very informative and I uh, definitely love hearing how you think our platform can quickly and easily drive performance increases as well as kind of a holistic view um, across all your digital marketing channels. That's something that we've really put as a priority for us and our company. Um, and glad to see that you guys recognize that as well. Um, nice. If you could just hit the stop share button. Um, can you see the screen here? 
Think of it. Perfect. Um, so kind of going off what Danielle was talking about, um, people often talk about optimization. People always want to be optimized, but what does that really mean? Um, well, for us, optimization is being able to easily and quantifiably attribute any increase in utility to any increase or decrease uh, in your ad spend. So we want to make sure that across whatever dollar we're spending or not spending, we know what impact that's going to have on our business. Um, and utility can really be anything. Uh, we like to look at it in terms of the ad funnel and generally have different optimization metrics across different levels of the ad funnel. For lower funnel stuff, we like to optimize towards ROAS, sometimes page views. Moving up the funnel, it could be impressions, branded searches. Every, every brand and every ad has a different utility that it's trying to optimize for. Uh, and it's really difficult. Um, so Amazon and Amazon advertising is awesome because they really give you a lot and a comprehensive amount of ad and attributed data within their advertising. That's why it kind of has a leg up on some of the other traditional advertisers, online uh, e-commerce advertisers, where it's very difficult to get insight into what that ad is actually driving in terms of return for your business. Whereas Amazon with their sponsored ad unit uh, selection and now their DSP makes it very easy to see exactly what you're driving with that ad dollar. So how does optimization look when you start mixing in all these other channels. Um, so you have your Amazon, your sponsored product, brand, brand video, DSP, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. It becomes very, very difficult very quickly to really understand what ads are driving performance and what ad dollars going where is actually relating to your account growth within Amazon and any other marketplace or DTC site that you might be selling. Um, so up until now, it's virtually been impossible. There are some third parties that have provided tools but what the Amazon attribution really allows you to do is determine exactly what that ad dollar means in relation to your growth on Amazon. So as Danielle mentioned and just walked us through, uh, the Amazon attribution allows you to apply attribution tags um, across any of your non-Amazon media buying. So you can understand the client journey and the consideration path and how that leads to conversions or other growth metrics for your business. So we like to apply attribution tags as granular as possible. So in our app right now, we mainly focus on Google, but we've manually run some attribution across other non-Amazon channels. So you can apply it with any level of granularity. What does that mean? Well, you could apply it attribution tags at the campaign level. So if you launch an ad, you can see just on aggregate how that ad is performing, or you can uh, launch attribution tags at the keyword or audience level. So within a campaign, you can see exactly how each keyword is performing, as well as on non-keyword advertisers and audience. Um, some of the key metrics that we like to look at are related to the ones that I mentioned on the funnel. So sales, add to carts, impressions, detailed page views, and purchase and purchase rate. Um, so why is it important to be advertising off Amazon? There was this kind of image that was being brought around saying how over 50% of product searches begin on Amazon. That number has been increasing the last two to three years and is only continuing to increase. But as of last year, 35% of product searches still begin off of Amazon. So sure, you can optimize your advertising, your Amazon advertising all you want, but if you're not even thinking about investing in off Amazon media, um, you're missing out. So non-Amazon channels make up for 35% of new product uh, searches. So you really need to be thinking about how, where, and when to be spending uh, on those different channels. So why is it important? So not only are 35% of searches um, taking place off Amazon, but there's a whole lot of benefit to driving traffic from non-Amazon channels to your Amazon store page or product page. Some of the key benefits that we look at um, are as follows. So I'm sure any Amazon advertiser is familiar with the Amazon flywheel. You kind of build impressions, impressions lead to conversions. The more conversions you have, the higher sales velocity you have, the more sales you have, hopefully the more reviews you're getting. That's gonna to lead to a higher organic ranking. Higher organic ranking leads to just overall better Amazon performance um, in addition to 
decreasing your CPC on sponsored ads, you'll just get more organic sales. Really kind of one of the keys to driving good performance on Amazon. So off Amazon traffic is gonna allow you to bring in new, new data sources and new impressions from previously untapped sources. The second is owning more real estate. There's this notion in e-commerce advertising of like share of voice, which is the equivalent of share of shelf in traditional um, boxed and mortar uh, stores. The, the, the online world, the e-commerce world is equivalent and anywhere and anytime can be a shelf for your product. If you wanna make sure that you're maximizing your awareness, you're gonna to need to be investing in all of those areas that someone will be looking for your product. And then lastly is bringing people into your pool of shoppers. So Amazon DSP, I'm sure a lot of you guys are running it. I'm sure a lot of you are interested in running it. Uh, it's a very, very powerful data set that allows you or ad unit that allows you to leverage Amazon's first party data to actually advertise on and off Amazon. Bringing in more impressions from non Amazon sources is gonna allow you to engage in multiple touch points with these potential customers and really ensure that you can maximize the utility of any ad dollar you spend, not just on Amazon, but on non-Amazon channels as well. So we're saying how great it is. Uh, we actually wanna show you some of the case studies that we've seen leveraging off Amazon traffic and the attribution specifically to drive on Amazon performance. Um, so I wanted to start with TikTok. TikTok has been blowing up in terms of a uh, social media channel in the last 12 months. Um, I've actually never used it, but I kind of see the vi virality of some of these videos and they get shared around quite a bit. So I don't know if any of you guys use TikTok, but you might have seen the foot peel mask video. Initially, uh, someone, a uh, foot peel mask company, sponsored one of these influencers to use their foot peel mask. Uh, I don't know if you saw, it's kind of funny, like you put it on and then you can peel your skin off, uh, kind of gross, but looks pretty satisfying. So someone saw it, it went viral. Tons of people made videos. There was over 50 million views on foot peel masks in the last six weeks. So what does that mean on Amazon? Um, so we've blurred out the actual sales data, but what you can see here is two things highlighted. The blue line is attributed sales. The purple line is search frequency rank. For those of you who don't leverage the brand analytics data set within Amazon, the search frequency rank is a rank that Amazon applies to search terms that deem like how frequent is that search term relative to all search terms um, on Amazon. So the number one search frequency rank will be the most searched um, search term on Amazon and it goes all the way up to 2 million. While we don't know the actual differences, like what is one to 10 mean in aggregate searches, we like to say that every hundred, like going hundred to 200 is probably in the magnitude of one to 10 million searches. Um, so what you see here is foot peel mask. It was generally hovering anywhere between 3000 to 6,000 in terms of search frequency rank. After these videos went viral, the search frequency rank jumped to 150. So probably increase of tens of millions of searches a month. What this led to on Amazon is an a thousand, over a thousand percent increase in attribute sales, as well as organic sales, um, as well as organic rank increasing. So again, kind of speaking to some of that off Amazon traffic and the ability for it to drive growth on Amazon, the numbers really speak for itself. Um, additionally, as I mentioned earlier, there's so many impressions now, so many people have engaged with this product. The product may or may not sell out if you kind of see this increase, but you now have all this data of people who you know are interested in your product and you know are interested in your brand. So you can, again, re-engage them throughout other types of ad units, um, whether it be DSP uh, or sponsored display. Another case study that we love uh, is actually leveraging Google ads. So it's kind of the social aspect. We like to look at the search aspect as well. So we worked with a CPG brand called Lemon Perfect. Uh, we actually just released this case study with Amazon, uh, I think last week. So Lemon Perfect traditionally was doing some of their own non-Amazon uh, advertising. Again, it was very difficult for them to see any insight into their ads. They had no idea how they were performing. They were sending it to a DTC site. DTC site was sending traffic back to Amazon. You could buy on page. 
Uh, they knew it was working because they could see sales volume, but they had no idea how to actually optimize these ads. So what we did was we got them set up with our product. Uh, we launched some Google ad campaigns. Our engine automatically took into consideration all the previous Google data that they had and then began to optimize. So in a few clicks of the button or a few clicks of a button, uh, they were able to drive over an eight increase in ROAS. Um, so again, something that previously before was virtually impossible without the Amazon attribution. Now having this insight into how this non-Amazon media is performing, we can really hone in on what's working and hone in uh, on that ROAS or whatever metric you're trying to optimize for. This is a great quote I love from the director of e-commerce at uh, Lemon Perfect. So at a high level, our software always tries to allow the user to think more strategically about their ad growth and not worry about setting up campaigns, adding keywords, adding attribution tags. We really want to take care of all the work that is not really fun and allow you to focus on the different types of strategies that Danielle was alluding to to actually drive performance, um, such as thinking about driving to a brand store, or testing out different creative. Uh, humans are really good at that. Machines are really good at doing all the manual operations that you don't wanna do. Um, so for those of you who aren't perpetual customers, we wanted to give some kind of key tips on how we drive performance with Google Ads. Um, people who use Perpetual, you can always reach out to your data strategist. They're more than happy to walk over these different tips with you and make sure that when you activate your Amazon attribution, you will be up and running uh, with our best practices. So the first is experiment. Everyone says it, there's a reason. Um, different copy, different creatives, different call to actions are gonna perform differently. Um, once more data rolls in, you can again, understand how those data are how, how that data is performing and how those ads are performing. You can begin to leverage some of the keywords you see driving performance in your call to actions, et cetera. But always start off with a wide net. You never wanna try something and say, okay, this doesn't work or this is the best thing ever. We generally like to let our customers A-B test. It's a really intuitive in-app uh, uh, feature where you can click a couple buttons, A-B test a bunch of different things and then allow our engine to actually go out uh, and determine and help guide you to what we think is driving performance. Second is establish a destination strategy. So as Danielle alluded to, some things you're gonna to wanna to drive to the store page, some things you're gonna to wanna to drive to a product page. Generally, if someone's searching for your brand name, um, not a product specifically, you might wanna just send them to your brand store or reviews. We're gonna suggest that you hit them with an ad that sends them exactly to, that competi to your competitor product, to your competitor product, um, such that brand store seeing something that they're not familiar with. So moving forward, yeah, definitely experiment with destination strategies. Again, if you do run with Perpetua, we also have how your keywords, sponsored brands, DSP are performing. So by unifying all those data sources, we can get you set up really quickly with things that we know and are highly likely to work. But again, uh, the, more, the more data you have, the better you're gonna be able to perform. Third is strategic with your bidding. Again, if you're using Perpetual, no need to worry. Our algorithms will take care of the bidding, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to think about how you segment bids across different categories. If you're bidding on your branded keywords, you're probably gonna to wanna to focus you know, more on a brand defense strategy, probably higher ROAS versus if you're bidding on competitor keywords, you might be willing to take a ROAS and really just focus on how many new people, how many uh, detailed page views you're gonna to bring to your products because again, so I'm clicking on that is not looking at your competitor, but now actually engaging in your brand. And then last is definitely re-engage converted shoppers with lower funnel ad units. So as I've been mentioning and reiterating is really um, focusing on Amazon DSP. The more, the more customers you have to retarget, the better that's gonna perform as well as your sponsored display. Um, a few other tips and tricks, again, if you're with Perpetua, you don't need to worry about this. Our engine will begin to iterate on some of these best practices. But if you are, um, if you are running this yourself, we found uh, using variations of Amazon buy or best tends to work really well with Google ads. Um, be very weary of broad match on Google. There's, if there's a lot of traffic on Amazon, there's 10X ad traffic on Google searches. 
Um, so be very careful. You can spend a lot of money very quickly. And if you're not keeping an eye and engaging on how that's performing, very, very easy to overspend. Um, and then lastly, the same way that people tell you in your Amazon product titles to include some of your key value props, uh, definitely include that in your copy. So same with your bullet points and your listing page, definitely consider um, what is performing and uh, include that in your copy. Last, using Perpetua. Uh, if anyone is using Perpetua, I recommend you click on that attribution tag, get signed up so you can begin to experiment with the different options we have. But very quickly, even within the same ad, you can A-B test sending to store page, sending to brand store, and really understand uh, with what ads and what products is it better to drive uh, to either of those. And then to um, very quickly just iterate on copy, um, A-B test and see, um, and see what is working. Uh, one question here um, from our own team is we are also um, contemplating integrating uh, Facebook measurement within the next year, as well as all of those other ad units or non Amazon channels that I mentioned. Um, so we're hopefully going to build out social channel after social channel. So we don't have to help you set it up manually, but you'll be able to quickly and easily launch Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, all of those ads uh, within our platform. So how do you get started with Perpetua? Uh, if you're a current Perpetua user, hit that attribution button fill out a form, our, our, our attribution team will get back to you uh, within 24 hours. If, you're, if you are on Perpetua, this is what it looks like. Quick little video, you can go in, launch goals, product, destination, A-B test copy, and then boom. Uh, we'll go out, launch those Google ads on your behalf, automatically apply attribution tags across all of those, uh, all of those keywords. And then as data rolls into Amazon, we get that through the API, our engine will go out and optimize Google ads uh, on your behalf. And then the reporting is going to be very sleek. Um, so in addition to keyword level performance, you'll see aggregate level performance across all of your ads. Uh, and then for any of, the, any of you that know Perpetua, we'll also have that in our total sales analytics um, feature where you'll be able to track your sponsored spend versus your DSP spend versus your attribution spend, all relative to organic sales, uh, blended ACoS, profitability, any of those metrics that you find valuable. If you aren't a Perpetua user and you're like, hey, this sounds awesome. I love the easy user-friendly flow. I wanna launch awesome ads in a matter of seconds. All you have to do is go to our website, perpetua.io, hit the big get started button in the top right. Um, takes maybe two clicks to connect your account. Uh, from there, 24 hours for your data to load, and we'll make sure that we take a look at your data and get you set up for success with our platform. Uh, so thank you. I hope some of you found value in this. Uh, it's definitely fun exploring new ad units, especially something as powerful as the Amazon attribution. And I'm confident that over the next three to six months, there'll be a lot of functionality in our app that will help our advertisers and brands activate and drive awesome performance across anywhere that they want to advertise. So I think anyone who asked questions got replied to directly. Um, if there's any questions that weren't answered, definitely feel free to reach out to us uh, on Perpetua. So go to perpetua.io. Uh, there's a little chat box, more than happy to field any questions that you guys have. Um, additionally, my email is just patrick at draper.ai. I'm more than happy to discuss any strategies you can't currently execute in Perpetua, whether it be TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook. Uh, I love helping people set up new and cool experiments so that we can really see great on Amazon performance. And there's no better time than Q4, as Danielle mentioned. So. Thanks everyone for joining. Bye.